Packaging design is one of my favorite things to create. It has so much space for creativity, it looks great on your portfolio, and if you know what you're doing, companies are willing to pay good money for it. Not to mention you can brag to your friends when you see the product on the supermarket shelf. So today I'll give you a sneak peek into my packaging design process inside Illustrator. From die lines and content distribution, all the way to concept, references, and all the stuff that goes through my mind while I'm choosing colors, elements, fonts, and everything in between. So let's go! Before we can start creating in Illustrator, we need a few things. The first and most important being the briefing of the product itself. This is something the company you work for will provide you, but since there's no company on my case, I made it all up myself with the help of ChatGPT. The product will be a single origin organic Colombian coffee called Sol y Oro. Sol, meaning sun, represents the bright sunlight that shines over the Andean peaks where the coffee is cultivated. And Oro, meaning gold, is a reference to the famous pre-Columbian works of gold made by the indigenous people of Colombia. ChatGPT also gave me a few directions for the packaging design itself, but nothing that an actual brand wouldn't provide me in a real scenario. With that out of the way, we can start working on the packaging itself. And for that we need a die line, which is a template that indicates the size of the package as well as where the paper will be cut, folded or glued. And this leads us to the sponsor of this video. Pactora has a collection of almost 3,000 packaging mockups and die lines, from boxes and tubes to cans, containers and paper bags. Everything is 100% customizable and downloadable, and their 3D mockup editor is easy to use, runs straight on the browser and doesn't require any 3D knowledge whatsoever. 3Ds are rendered using Blender technology and look awesome. Every render you've seen so far was made using Pactora. Use code ND50 for a 50% lifetime discount on Pactora. For this project, we're gonna create a rectangular box which will contain the coffee beans inside. Browsing through Pactora, I found this die line which is very similar to a box of coffee that I have at home, but the dimensions are a little off, which is not a problem since we can customize it however we want. Then I'll just hit download die line and we're ready to start the fun part. I'll come back to Pactora later in the video to bring my design to life and show you their 3D mockup tool. I'll drag and drop the PDF containing the die line in Illustrator and with a clear picture of the size and area I have to work with, I'm gonna start thinking about concept, colors, fonts, elements and bringing in references inside Illustrator. My first step for coming up with a concept is analyzing the name of the brand itself, Sol Yoro, which already gives me two clues to start building the concept, which are sun and gold. The briefing said the sun is a reference to the bright sunlight that hit the Andean peaks where the coffee is cultivated, and gold references the gold art made by the indigenous people of Colombia. And that's at least three more clues. The Andean peaks, gold art and indigenous people. And I feel like that's enough for me to start working. Now I'll start looking for references which will both help me later in creating the design itself, but also help me tying all these loose ideas together to create an actual concept. I feel like sun and mountains give off a natural sunset beyond the peaks vibe, so I did a little research on the Andes and the coffee region of Colombia, and found out that both regions overlap precisely, meaning most of the coffee in Colombia is cultivated in the mountains, which means that the Andean peaks is a safe reference for the packaging design. Remember, I'm working off of ChatGPT information here, so I'll fact check everything. Then I researched about the different indigenous people of Colombia and the pre-Columbian gold art, which led me to the Museo del Oro in Bogota, meaning Museum of Gold, confirming the whole gold art story. There was a lot of pictures of gold artwork from the museum and I brought some of them inside Illustrator, but one statue in particular was drawing my attention and giving me some ideas, so I gave it some emphasis. I also looked for some references of other indigenous artwork like clothing and painting, especially from the YU people, because they have some beautiful design patterns that might work very well on the packaging design. Last but not least, we also need design references to have a general understanding of how this particular product is designed. This will help us both stand out from the competition while also staying recognizable within our market niche. So here's the whole concept tied together. The bottom half of the box will be layers of mountains in shades of brown, orange and yellow, with the sun rising on the horizon. I'm giving a lot of emphasis to bright warm colors because they're the main motif of this package. Both sun and gold are bright and warm. I'm thinking of making the upper half of the package a deep blue, both to give the packaging a lot of contrast with the bright colors below, but also to represent that early evening sky when the sun is about to disappear on the horizon. 
The blue background will also provide a great canvas for the shiny yellow logo that I'm going to create for Soliodo. The gold will also be represented in the sky with a vectorized pictogram of the golden statue that I showed before, almost like a golden god watching over the horizon. Lastly, I'll try to incorporate some of the YU patterns as details here and there, if I feel there's space for it. I don't want to make the packaging too overcrowded with symbols and elements. Alright, now it's time to work. I'll start by making the mountain colors. I want the one further in the back to be a bright warm yellow and then progressively get darker layer after layer, until it becomes a dark reddish brown. I want the darker color to be the one on top because this is the color that will extend to the entire bottom of the box, leaving a nice background that I can place information on top. This might seem counterintuitive since I said that I want to give emphasis to the bright colors, but it's precisely the presence of darker colors that will draw even more attention to the bright ones. Contrast is one of my favorite principles in design. And the same idea of contrast will be used for the sky. I'll use a dark blue color which, even though will make the package darker overall, will draw that much more attention to the bright yellow logo later on. Now that I have an idea for the colors, I can work on the mountains. I'll use the paintbrush tool to draw some random mountain peaks, and if I don't like the result, I'll just delete it and draw it again until I get something I like. Then I'll use the pen tool to join both ends by making a rectangle on the bottom. I'll repeat this process four more times, changing the color with each layer. I'll make sure all layers have the same width and use the warp tool to adjust the mountain peaks where necessary to make the composition more interesting. Since the mountains will go all the way around the box, I need both ends to match when the box is put together. So I'll duplicate all the mountains, place them side by side and then edit the right side to match the left. I'll place these mountains on the file with the die line, adjust its size to match the width of the box and then make two copies, one on each side. I need the drawing to extend to the sides so we can cover the glue area as well as the bleed. To fill the rest of the box with brown, I'm actually going to make a duplicate of the bleed markings and paint it with brown. Then just delete the anchor points up top and adjust the height. For the skies, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Duplicate the bleed markings, paint it blue and then delete the anchor points at the bottom. The base layer of the packaging is done and now I want to work on the logo, which will be just typographic. I browsed Adobe fonts to see if I could find something that related to the project somehow, and I found this font called JetLab, which has a very geometric vibe which is going to fit perfectly with the project. It reminded me a lot of the YU art patterns. This font also reminded me of Latin American ethnic art and design in general, just because of how common geometric patterns are in these designs. For the logo, I wrote Soliodo with the font I just downloaded, outlined the text and then edited the characters so the logo would resemble a rising sun. I believe the amount of detail in the font and the different size letters is enough for this logo to stand on its own without the need of a symbol to support it. I painted the logo a lighter shade of yellow and placed it on the front panel of the package. For the secondary font, I need something that's easier to read, since the font I used on the logo is not great for legibility. But at the same time, it also has to be bold and geometric to match the rest of the design. I think sun and gold are symbols of power and strength, so I need the elements of the design to relate to that. So there's no better choice than probably the most beloved free font among all designers. Montserrat. Below the logo, I'm gonna write Colombian coffee and then fill the rest of the length of the logo with two white lines. I'll use the same font, size and color to add other information to the front of the packaging, like weight and whole bean at the bottom and organic and single origin at the top. There's still a lot of space on the bottom of the package, so I'm gonna use it to show some useful information about the coffee. This is something that I'm bringing in from my design reference board. I'll make a 2x3 grid, align with the width of the logo and inside each cell I'll place a different characteristic of the coffee. Variety, roast, altitude, body and acidity. In the remaining cell I'll place the roasting date but since it will be manually written, I'll add a white background and use a handwritten font to simulate it. Lastly, I'll add the established date of the company at the top of the packaging, aligning it to the other elements as necessary. Now here's what I'm planning for the other three sides. On the right, I'll add the tasting notes of the coffee and information about acidity, bitterness and body. On the left side, I'll add instructions on how to make the perfect pour over, with things like grind size, water temperature and coffee to water ratio. Finally, on the back of the packaging, I think I'll add some information about the coffee or the brand 
like where it was cultivated and highlighting qualities like organic and single origin. I don't know, I'll think about it. It's worth noting that since I'm not making this for an actual client, I'm having to come up with what information I'll add to the package and where I'll add them. I'm using other coffee packages as reference, but again, this is something that the company would inform you. Okay, let's move on. Starting with the right side, I used the same font I used for the logo to write the title, using the front of the package as a reference for alignment, and then just added a few tasting notes that I thought would make sense for this coffee. But again, if it was a real project, that's something the brand would inform me. Below, I used these circles to create a scale of 1 to 5 for acidity, bitterness, and body of the coffee. On the left side, I used the same font and alignment for the title and added a few instructions on how to get the best results out of your pour over. I designed the icons myself because they were very simple, but you can easily find similar icons for free on the internet. Below the instructions, I used the remaining space to add the barcode of the product. On the back of the package, I added the title Hot as the Sun, Precious as Gold, and that's as far as I've made it. At this point, I was empty on creativity to keep coming up with coffee things, so I kindly asked ChatGPT to write me a paragraph about the product. And I must say, the end result was pretty awesome. Nestled among the high Andean peaks, Solioto emerges as a Colombian coffee of pure distinction. Cultivated organically in the crisp mountain air, its beans carry a subtle harmony, nurtured by the sun's golden touch. With low acidity and a satisfying body, each sip of Solioto unveils a delightful balance. From the verdant hills of the mountains, the single origin treasure brings four flavors that ground the senses and elevate the everyday. <laughs> All right. The text was looking great, but this back part of the packaging was still looking kind of simple and empty, so I decided to add some more detail. I started by adding the rising sun, as I had previously planned early on, which just consists in a single yellow circle behind the mountains, so it was still not enough. However, I remembered that I had some pictures of the YU art saved in my reference board, and decided to use those to create some kind of pattern that I could use as a frame around the text, so that's what I did. As I said before, a lot of Latin American ethnic art revolves around geometric shapes, so coming up with a pattern was not a super hard task, and it was also really fun to do. Once I had the pattern ready, I arranged it into a frame around the text and used the gradient panel to add a fade to the pattern as it dips behind the mountains, and I think this looks really, really cool. Now the last major element that was missing was the gold statue, so I started vectorizing it. What I thought would be a quick thing to do ended up taking quite a while. Vectorizing is usually an easy task, but not this one. The statue was entirely made of gold, and sometimes it was hard to understand its shape, but with a few different reference pictures, I managed to get to a result that I was happy with. Once I was done, I brought the statue vector over to the main file, and used it as a very subtle background right in the front of the package, and I loved the result. It looked like a god or a warrior watching over the land, which reinforced the connotation of power and strength that sun and gold carry. Now all that's left to do is add a few details here and there, just to tie everything together. I painted the dust flaps yellow and added two pictograms, one representing the sun and the other representing the gold. The gold one is a simplified version of the golden statue, now with a full body instead of just a head. Both pictograms use just a slightly darker shade of yellow, because I don't want them to draw too much attention. It's just a fun little surprise for the customer as they open the box. I also painted the tuck-in flap yellow as well. The bottom half of the package was feeling a little bit empty, so I added some elements there as well. On the sides, I added once again the head of the golden statue, and just like the pictograms on the dust flaps, I colored them with a very slightly brighter shade of the brown, because they're not the focus of the design, they're just a detail. On the back of the package, I placed the logo of Solioto using the same color. On the top panel of the package, I placed once again the logo in its original bright yellow, and used the same pattern that I used on the back of the package, but this time in a darker shade of blue, creating a frame all around the logo. It's important to be aware that the logo should be placed upside down on the top panel, so that it is not upside down when the package is closed. My final touch was to add a few glows here and there. Since both sun and gold are shiny things, I thought that would look nice. I added a glow all throughout the mountain range, another glow on the big sun on the back of the package, and lastly on the logo on the top panel. 
And now the packaging is ready to go. The last thing I'm gonna do is make some 3D mockups. Working with traditional Photoshop mockups is kinda annoying. First, you have to find a mockup that looks like your product, which at times feels like an impossible task already. Then you have to break down the packaging file into different images, import them to Photoshop, edit the layers, and that's not to mention that the mockup might not even be the correct dimensions for your product. And this is one of the things that I loved most about working with Backdora. I can simply save the package design as a PNG, and that's all the prepping I need to do. Now I'll open Pactora's website and go to the 3D generator up here. Once it's loaded, I'll search for the package that I used, click on Edit Dimensions, change the sizes to fit my product, and click on Confirm. You can see that we're already in a 3D environment. You can move the camera around the package and even open and close it. If you want to, you can also upload each side of the package as a separate image. But since we made the design using Pactora's die line for this exact package, I can simply go to the design mode up here, click on upload your image, and open the PNG I just exported from Illustrator. Once I align it with the die line markings, I can go back to mockup mode and I have a full 3D mockup of the product, ready to export. And I could go to export die line and mockup. There are options to export images and they already look really good. You can position the camera and rotate the product however you want or you can export a video with one of the pre-made animations. But there's actually a way to make this look even better, which is right here on the left side by accessing the 3D Modeling Center. This is a full-fledged 3D environment. You can move, scale, and rotate the packaging. You can add the product multiple times or add geometric shapes to create compositions, change the background color, and even change the lighting position, angle, and brightness. But the thing I enjoy the most about the 3D Modeling Center is the big list of pre-made compositions, which makes it super easy to create beautiful renders to showcase your product, whether it is to make a presentation to your client or even a final product to customers. Pactora is an amazing product. I have been using it for the past weeks in preparation for this video, and they were even kind enough to listen to some feedback I had on where I thought Pactora could improve, which shows that they're listening to customers and improving their products. Don't forget to use code ND50 for a 50% lifetime discount on Pactora. If you enjoyed this video, check this other one here. A special thanks to all my Patreon supporters who help me make high quality content like this one. More on how you can support the channel in the description down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment if you have any doubts. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!